we're not really looking at spelling, so just like write it as carefully and as you can. After about 30 seconds, I'm, I'll give you a five second warning. I'll say five seconds. And then I'll say, okay, that's time. And then we'll need both teams to reveal their whiteboards at the same time. And then we have a panel of judges that will determine which teams are awarded points. And we'll keep track of the score after that. So we'll give one point per question. Okay? Hopefully I've covered everything. If anybody has any questions, just let me know. Okay. So I'm also reading some of the questions for this first match. So this is kind of the host's position. All right. So we're going to start with our first question of match number one, which uh, gets asked by one of our authors. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Ketterisman, and I'm a children's author, and I'm the author of uh, the book Music for Tigers, that is in your battle of the books. I'm so proud to say that, and I'm so grateful. I'm super excited to have Music for Tigers included in the competition. And I'm gonna read out some of the questions. Um, so here we go, good luck. What is a bunion? Okay, 30 seconds. Five more seconds. Five more seconds. Okay, and time's up. So we'll have the to reveal what they have on their uh, their way for it. Okay, so you guys can hold it up so that the judges can see, right? This is our judges right here, and they won't be able to see that. So we have it doesn't exist, and can you guys turn your so can see a little bit. Uh, oh, you're in the middle of something. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes our judges will just need a quick second to see if they agree with the answer as it's given. for this one. So the answer that we have is it was a made-up animal that Louise's uncle Ruth invents to trick her. I felt like both groups were kind of on the right track there. So it's a good idea to add a little more detail if you can because you won't, you won't lose out if you, if you do that. Okay, so we're going to have both teams rotate. And we're rotating into the writing position. So everybody's going to have a turn at that. This team has two extra players. So you'll see that Two of their players are going to rotate on, just like a volleyball game. And the person that writes on the bench team is rotating off, and then everybody else is rotating. Okay? And we're going to move on to question two, which is also being read by one of our authors. in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. I hope you enjoy the survival adventure story set all the way in the Nevada desert, which is where I'm from. And I hope this book didn't make you too thirsty. Good luck in your competition and may the best team win. Who downed the first cup of toilet water? Okay, 30 seconds.
All right, five more seconds. Okay, let's check out the answers these two teams have. John and Stuart. And the correct answer is John. So we're going to award a point to Team Boba and we're going to ask players to rotate. for this match. Uh, question three. What grade is Omar assigned to when he starts school? 30 seconds. I was supposed to offer you options. Okay, I don't usually host the rounds. I'm going to give you multiple choice options, and then I'll give you a little bit more time. Sorry about that. It's my first time doing this in a long time. We haven't been in person for a while. Okay, here are the multiple choice options. Third grade, A. B, fourth grade. C, fifth grade. D, sixth grade. Third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. A, B, C, or D? I think we'll take the number or the, the letter. If you've already written the number down, that'd be great. Okay, I'm going to give you some more time. Okay, let's see what our groups have. And bench bears have sixth grade and C, fifth grade. Points for both teams. Excellent job. Way to go. Yeah, let's clap for these guys. Good job. Okay, our fourth question is not a multiple choice question, so I'm just going to read it and that'll be it after the group rotates. I'll give you guys a bit of time. Question four. Why do the newspapers say that Ken saved all those lives? Why do the newspapers say that Ken saved all those lives? 30 seconds. So let's get both teams to show us what they have right now. Because he's a leader? Okay, and this one's blank. No, okay, so the answer we were looking for there is he was the one that spotted the plane that eventually rescued him. Looks like a couple of you knew that, but lots of people didn't, so that's okay. A couple of people in the audience go, oh, shucks, darn it, I knew that one. So it's great that you guys are super quiet when you think you know an answer. And what I'm going to try to remember to do sometimes, because I think it's fun, is if we don't get a right answer, I'll throw it up to the people out there. Okay? And then you'll have a chance to show us that you've got it. Okay, let's rotate. We're welcoming another team from Central. We're going to have teams just kind of popping in intermittently here. Um, Vermillion Forces teams might not get here till about 10. So we're all just trying to navigate that as best we can. Here comes a multiple choice question. We'll see if I actually read you the options this time. I'll do my best. Here we go. 
Question five. What game does Colin begin to play with his new friends once school starts and Louisa returns to Canada? Oh, you don't have that one? I had to make a last second change because I got a late offer video, so I did change this one. I didn't think it, okay, sorry, I got it. Okay. I got rid of that question. The rest of it will be good. Okay, sorry. This is the only match I did that with, so this will never happen again. Okay, thank you. Question five. This one is not multiple choice though. Okay, ready? All right. When Ren confronted her mom, about the seven bottles of pills that she had, what are three things that she and her mom talk about nurses taking? I'll read that one more time. When Ren confronted her mom about the seven bottles of pills she had, what are three things that she and her mom talk about nurses taking? Five more seconds. And time's up. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, we have medications, which is certainly one of the right ones. And what do we have here? Pills, she's a nurse, and she knows. So you guys both had the same answer, right? And so, yeah, that one, I gave you a few extra seconds because it was three. So we didn't get three from either group, right? Okay. So what we had was um, pills, a box of band-aids, and snacks. Okay. So we're going to move on to question six. That's where we rotate. Yeah, that was good. That was, I, when I wrote that question, I thought that would be a hard one. Okay, question six. This one's multiple choice. How do Kabir and Amma share secrets even when they are not alone? How do Kabir and Amma share secrets even when they are not alone? 30 seconds. Question six, I'll do it with the choices this time. How do Kabir and Amma share secrets even when they are not alone? A, by staying up late after the others are asleep. B, by distracting most girl with candy. C, by speaking Kannada. D, by being the last two to head to the washroom each morning. Now I'll give you three more. Sorry. Five seconds. Just do A, B, C, or D. All right, let's have both teams reveal. All right, so we have the same answer written two different ways. So C was the choice by Speaking Canada, and that's what this team has written down. So 
Yeah, we're going to give a point to both teams on that. Good job. There you go. And thanks for rotating. Good job. And just a reminder, Team Boba, you can't just write the A, B, C, or D if you'd like. And then you don't have to try spelling from that. Oh, that was a really good job. Okay. Let's see if I can do two jobs at once here. Read a question successfully and start a timer. Uh, this one's not multiple choice, so I'll probably get away with it. Question seven. Who had turned into the first scarecrow that the group was able to get to speak? Who was the... Or who had turned into the first scarecrow that the group was able to get to speak? 30 seconds. Five more seconds. And time's up. Let's have both teams reveal what they have. We have Jonathan and we have the bus driver. So the judges are wondering if the bus driver's name is the same as the answer they have, and I don't think it is. Um, so the name, it was one of um, Brian's friends, Phil. Okay, from Small Spaces. A, kind of a bit of a minor character, but he had a major part there for a little tiny bit. Thanks for rotating, good job. short answer when we have to write something, I'm going to give you a little bit of extra time on this one. Um, what were at least two changes that John's dad wanted in the way that his flag was displayed in his room? I'm going to do that one more time. What were at least two changes, two will, if you have two, you will give you the, the points for this one. What were at least two changes that John's dad wanted in the way that his flag was displayed in his room? 30 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look. Not have it hanging as a curtain, have it on the wall, no water. Okay, hey, one point to Team Boba. So what we had as a group on that was he wanted it on the wall, he wanted it not hung as a curtain, he also wanted the emblem upright so that he could read the words Battleborn on the flag. So any two of those things we would have accepted. Thanks for rotating, guys. You did a great job. It's really hard to do this first. So I give both teams tons of credit for that. Okay, well now we have two multiple choice questions. Question nine. What makes Maddie realize that she has to move to her dad's house? What makes Maddie realize that she has to move to her dad's house? And here are the four choices. He had A, he has a fireplace. B, 
She runs out of food at her mom's house. C, her dad's is closer to the lake and has a better water supply. D, the coyote and other animals near her mom's house made her nervous. So A, B, C, or D. A, he has a fireplace. B, she runs out of food at her mom's house. C, her dad's is closer to the lake and has a better water supply. D, the coyote and other animals near her mom's house made her nervous. 30 seconds. Both teams are ready, right? Just nod your head if you are. Okay, let's have a look. So we have an A and a B. So we're awarding one point to Team Bebo. It is the correct answer that he has a fireplace. Next, we have our final question. One more multiple choice. And thanks to both teams for rotating. Great job. Okay, final question for this round. What does Kabir prefer his mother to do while they are eating? What does Kabir prefer his mother to do while they're eating? A, ask the guard for another fan. B, sing. C, ask the guards for more food. D, tell stories. So A, ask the guard for another fan. B, sing. C, ask the guard for more food. D, tell stories. 30 seconds. Seconds? I think they're both ready. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Both teams have answered D. Correct. Great job. Point for both teams. And that concludes our first match. So thank you to both teams. Give them a round of applause as they move back to the other team. And we're going to call up our next two teams on our schedule. So we're going to have Reed, Win, Repeat from Nicola Canford right there. And over here we have Sassy Batty Turtles from Central. Okay, so we're going to get started um, with match number two here. And our first question is going to be read by one of our authors. This will just take me a sec to get this. Uh, Nevada desert, which is where I'm from, 
and I hope this book didn't make you too thirsty. Good luck in your competition, and may the best team win. Where were Cleverly and Will hoping to go when they met John? 30 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, the time is up. Let's have a look. I see Western Road. I see Jim Lockwood's house. We're awarding a point to read, win, repeat for that one. Okay, so we're going to ask teams to rotate. This is their first match, so we're going to give them a little bit of time. So he goes to Gwen's. Gwen goes to Caleb's. Caleb goes there. Raina goes to where Zoe was. Caleb makes down. Well, I can't know their names. Okay, there we go. Good. So it's easy. Good job. This will, this will work for you. Okay. You guys rotated too. I didn't know really work. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Our second question is also being read by an author, and it's going to come up on your screens soon. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Kedrisman, and I'm a children's author, and I'm the author of uh, the book Music for Tigers that is in your battle of the books. I'm so proud to say that, and I'm so grateful. I'm super excited to have Music for Tigers included in the competition. And I'm going to read out some of the questions. Um, so here we go. Good luck. How does Uncle Ralph know that it's going to rain? Okay, that's it. 30 seconds. Five more seconds. Okay, let's have a look at what our teams have come up with. There was dark clouds. The spiders go inside of the cabin. Okay, a point for read, win, repeat. It was a huntsman spider, a great big one that scared Louisa quite a bit. That's what I You're stuck with me reading the rest of the questions. Um, question three, multiple choice. What surfaced from the water with the crew about five days from land and got mistaken by one of the boys for a U-boat? What surfaced from the water with the crew about five days from land and was mistaken by one of the boys for a U-boat? A, another lifeboat. B, Debris from the ship, C, a rescue boat, D, a whale. And you can just write the letter that you choose for your answer, or you could write the answer out if you want. I'll read the answers one more time. Another lifeboat, that's A. B, debris from the ship, C, a rescue boat, D, a whale. 30 seconds. Both teams look down, so I think we'll call it there. And we'll have them reveal their answers. We have A from Sassy Daddy Turtles and C from Read, Win, Repeat. 
And we're not ordering plates. It was G a whale. A couple of people knew that. Shout out to the front row over there. They all made this one. They either tricked me or they got that one. I'm going to say they got it. Okay. All right. So we are moving on to question four. Another multiple choice. I will totally wait. You don't have to bang your uh, knee against the table. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for remembering, too, because I didn't remind you. Here's question four. Whose arrival caused Ren's dad to say that their family was now complete? Whose arrival caused Ren's dad to say that their family was now complete? A, Vanessa, B, Ren, C, Paxton and Ayla, D, Rennie. A, Vanessa, B, Ren, C, Paxton and Ayla, D, Rennie. 30 seconds starts now. So we have C from Sassy Valley Turtles, that's Paxton Mela, A, Vanessa by Nicola Canfords, team read, may repeat. We're awarding points to Sassy Valley Turtles. That's the correct answer, C. That's okay. All right, here comes question five. This is a short answer question, so you'll be ready. Why did Kabir take far longer than Ronnie expected in the public washroom? Why did Kabir take far longer than Ronnie expected in the public washroom? 30 seconds. reveal this time. Let's have a look. Because he never got a shower, and because he was looking in the mirror. And judges are awarding a point to Nicola Cantor for that one. He had never seen a mirror before because of spending all of his life in prison, so that was just a strange moment. For him. And we got teams rotating. That's awesome. Thank you. Next question is question six. This is a short answer question. What is the name for the days that happen every two weeks that make school very hard for all the kids at the refugee school, even causing some to faint? What is the name for the days that happen every two weeks that make school very hard for all the kids at the refugee school, even causing some to faint? 30 seconds. but we're not ordering a point for that. So the days are called empty days. It's the days where their, their food supply is empty. Pretty close. Yeah, let's rotate. A2 is the name of the camp. That was a good guess as well. Two really good answers there. Okay, we're going to move on to a multiple choice question, number seven. So A, B, C, or D is fine here if you don't want to write the whole thing. 
After surviving the fire, what was the next near-death experience that Maddie had shortly after? A. The tornado. B. Being attacked by wild dogs. C. Surviving the looters. D. Being swept into the creek during high water. After surviving the fire, what was the next near-death experience that Maddie had shortly after? A. The tornado. B. Being attacked by wild dogs. C. Surviving the looters. D. Being swept into the creek during high water. 30 seconds. Both teams look down. So, yeah, let's reveal. Because we're behind schedule a little bit. We got C from both teams. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit of from my side. Oh, D and C. Okay. My bad. Sorry. So C was surviving the looters. D was being swept into the creek during high water. Both those things happened, but the question was really specific about when. So the judges are awarding points to Nicola Hanford. Steve, you're winning. And we're going to have to teach the The looters before the fire. And I'm just going to remind the audience, I know you guys often know the answers, just make sure you're not saying them loud enough for them to hear or read your lips, okay? Do this to, if you want to talk to your neighbor quietly, but try and keep it really quiet because we don't want to give them answers. Solid advice. Okay, we're going to move on to question eight, multiple choice. After leaving the bus, why did Ollie tell Brian that she hoped that they would get in trouble? A, it meant that everyone would find out about the smiling man. B, it meant they were going to get disciplined for how they treated Coco. C, it meant that all the secrets about what people had done would be out. D, it meant she had been wrong and there was no danger. I'm going to read the whole thing again. After leaving the bus, why did Ollie tell Brian that she hoped they would get in trouble? A, it meant that everyone would find out about the smiling man. B, it meant they were going to get disciplined for how they treated Coco. C, it meant that all the secrets about what people had done would be out. D, it meant she had been wrong and there was no danger. 30 seconds. Question nine. This is a short answer question. What was 96 miles away? That's it. That's the whole question. What was 96 miles away? reveal. And just a reminder, because some teams came a little bit after I explained this, we're not going to be really harsh on spelling here, right? If we can figure out what you're trying to say, we'll, we'll go with that. So hold up your board and let's see. Time's up. Town. And they weren't quite finished yet. Okay. Audience, you want this one? Yeah. Oh, hang on. I'm going to wait and see if the judges like those answers. Nope. No points awarded. Go ahead. In the front row, yeah, from bench, I think. Desert? Sorry? The desert? the desert? Well, there's desert all over the place. How about way in the back? Let's go. There's two of you with your hand up. Say it at the same time. Go. Bright Ranch. Bright Ranch. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, let's rotate. 
I always find the easiest place to be sitting when, to have the right answer is out in the audience. It's a lot harder when you're up here. So when you throw it to the audience, usually you can get the right answer really quick. You just didn't have time, right? That happens. Okay, we're way behind on schedule, so I can't give extra time. All right, last question for this match. Here's number 10, it's multiple choice. Why is Maddie oddly grateful to the looters led by angry boys? A, they made access to the stores much easier. B, they let her keep her bike. C, seeing them made her feel safer because she knew they were, there were more people. Or D, they reminded her of the pastor from the mega church that she liked. I'm going to read the whole thing again. Why is Maddie oddly grateful to the looters led by angry boys? A, they made access to the stores much easier. B, they let her keep her bike. C, seeing them made her feel safer because she knew there were more people. D, they reminded her of the pastor from the mega church that she liked. We'll go 30 seconds. Both teams already have an answer down. You guys good? You ready? Okay, let's rebuild. Both teams have A. That is correct. Nice job. All right. Well played on that question. So congrats to both teams. And we're going to get them to head back to their seats. And we're going to call it Wolverines and Sham. Wolverines are going to sit over there. Sham over here. Next round, and the first question is going to be read by one of the authors. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Ketterisman, and I'm a children's author, and I'm the author of uh, the book Music for Tigers that is in your battle of the books. I'm so proud to say that, and I'm so grateful. I'm super excited to have Music for Tigers included in the competition. And I'm going to read out some of the questions. Um, so here we go. Good luck. What type of animal is piggy? 30 seconds start now.
for a second. I'm so honored that you're meeting Violet Zerbo for your Battle of the Books, and I hope you'll read my next book, which will be out in September. It's called Haven Jacob Saves the Planet, and it's about the kid who's obsessed with climate change. And I think a lot of kids are going to connect to that book. So um, please look out for it. Um, what was the nickname for heterochromia? Kate, 30 seconds. more seconds.
Okay, this next one's also multiple choice. What did Gregory have in her backpack that John said would save the day after they had been robbed by the people in the silver pickup? A, steak knife, B, an empty water bottle, C, some cash, or D, a small flashlight with a fresh battery. So A, a steak knife, B, an empty water bottle, C, some cash, or D, a small flashlight with a fresh battery. And this next one is not multiple choice. So question six, what does Ronnie's name mean? In 30 seconds start now. Question eight is the multiple choice. Who was the first man to come to A2 and say that Omar should go to school? A. Salon, B. Tall Ali, C. Jerry, or D. Michael? A. Salon, B. Tall Ali, C. Jerry, or D. Michael? 30 seconds start now. Okay, the next one is also multiple. 
multiple choice, number nine. Where did the bus driver point to, indicating where Coco, Brian, and Ollie should go? A, towards the forest, B, towards the bus, C, towards the mist, or D, towards the town? A, towards the forest, B, towards the bus, C, towards the mist, or D, towards town? 30 seconds start now. No points for this one. Wait, the answer was A. Where's the fourth? Okay, and this is the last question for this round. This is also multiple choice. Who was the first of Omar's friends to get resettled in Canada? A. Abdi Kareem, B. Maryam, C. Jerry, or D. Nemo? A. Abdi Kareem, B. Maryam, C. Jerry, or D. Nemo? very quick little notes. First of all, um, just a reminder to the audience, sometimes your whispers are a little loud and some of us up here can hear what you're saying, so make sure that you're being very quiet um, when teams are deliberating about the answers. Secondly, some of these author videos will get a little bit shorter. I wanted to make sure that all of the teams got to see the little introductions that the writers do where they talk about uh, some of their books and how happy they are that you guys are participating in this event and reading their book. Um, so I've kind of cut that stuff out after all of the teams are here. We're still waiting for Vermilion Ports. They have a long ways to travel. So you're going to see that later in the matches, those videos will get a lot shorter. And that'll save us time. We're going to be a little bit behind on time, so the matches won't start exactly when our schedule is. OK, so we've got both teams ready. And there's eight on this team? There's six per team, right? Um, we have two sit off. Is it supposed to be six? Uh, I guess they're going to rotate eight. I don't know. Usually we have six. OK. And this team's not rotating, so you guys are going to rotate, and then this gentleman's going to leave, and then you're going to rotate like this, and then you're going to be on first. You're going to go there? Okay, all right. Okay, um, match four. I just have to get to our videos. All right. Let's get rid of that too. All right.
Hi everybody, my name is Michelle Kettlerisman and I'm a children's author and I'm the author of uh, the book Music for Tigers that is in your battle of the books. I'm so proud to say that and I'm so grateful. I'm super excited to have Music for Tigers included in the competition. And I'm going to read out some of the questions. Um, so here we go. Good luck. Why is the Tarkin Forest at risk? All right, 30 seconds. seconds. And time's up. Let's do a reveal here. We have logging and because the people are hunting. We're going to order a point to call it, though, for that one. Logging was the biggest factor. A very, very down the list was mining. Hunting affected the animals, but not the forest itself. Welcome to Vermilion Forests. We're a little bit behind schedule. You'll notice it we're really quick. All right, so for question two, we're going back to one of our authors. And please listen for this question. Hi, I'm JL Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles. And I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. I hope you enjoy the survival adventure story set all the way in the Nevada desert, which is where I'm from. And I hope this book didn't make you too thirsty. Good luck in your competition, and may the best team win. What was John doing, and where was he when the power went out? 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Okay, time's up. Let's have a look at what we have here. At his neighbor's house, at his neighbor's house watching a movie. And the question is really specific, specifically asking for two things, where and what was he doing. So we'll see what our judges say. It just says, at his neighbor's house. At his neighbor's house watching a movie is the one over there. Call the book. Point to call the book. <laughs> Finch's answer was correct, but not complete. They were the two things that she asked for in the question. So that's the difference there. Okay, so you're just stuck with me reading from now on. Our next two questions are short answer. I'm just going to... Give Miss Esplin a break here. There we go. All right, question three. What new food does Kabir try that makes him feel like little frogs are leaping around inside his mouth? 
What new food does Kabir try that makes him feel like little frogs are leaping around inside his mouth? 30 seconds starts now. Okay, let's have a look. See what our teams have come up with here. The squirrel stew, and then the last word there. Oh, you, I don't think you can say both those answers, right? It's like you can only pick one. The stew? The stew? Okay. Let's have a look. I can't quite see that word there. We have oh, you don't have one? Okay. All right. No points. This is going to hurt, but it was so that I just couldn't let you have both those choices, right? You got to pick one or the other. Let's run to you. Sorry, guys. All right, question number four. Kelly described the family's move as a choice that she got to make. Just like Rennie's dad made a choice to move to Brooklyn and be with Vanessa. What choice did Rennie then decide to make? Kelly described the family's move as a choice that she got to make, just like Rennie's dad made a choice to move to Brooklyn and be with Vanessa. What choice did Rennie then decide to make? great because I was late starting the timer. I think let's reveal answers. We have change your name to Ren and change your name to Ren. Perfect. Thanks to both teams. Great job. And then just going to rotate. Great. Thanks, team. All right. Question five is a multiple choice, so um, for those of you that came late, we're, we're okay if you write in A, B, C, or D. If you write out the words too, that's also fine. We'll, we'll kind of work with both. What got left behind from the evacuation in barrels? A, cell phones. B, food. C, cases of water. D, suitcases. What got left behind from the evacuation in barrels? A, cell phones. B, food. C, cases of water. D, suitcases. Both teams look ready. Just give me a nod. This will save us time. Okay, let's reveal. Both teams are going with A. And that is correct. Points to both teams. And our next question is question six, also multiple choice. When Omar first got to the camp, he did not like Fatima. What changed his opinion? A, when she stood up to neighbors who suggested she tie Hassan up. B, when she got brownie and was able to provide milk. C, when she finally got them an appointment at the UN. Or D, when she said that Omar should go to school and that she would look after Hassan. like little fortresses around these answers. I think they're right, let's go. I see A from Colorful Steam and C from the Bench Bears. Point to Colorful on that one, A is the correct answer. I'm talking about flashback scene at the end of the book. Oh, 
He only has four. Oh, they should be rotating the pen. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just slide down. Just pass the whiteboard, but yeah, either way works. Or they could just pass the whiteboard around, but it's pretty close, so it's better in that spot. Okay. All right. Moving forward, that's what we'll do. No big deal. Okay. Um, so we're on to number seven. This is multiple choice. What are three things that Ken was allowed to take to Canada? A, a ration card, a favorite book, and gloves. B, gas mask, ID card, Bible. C, two pairs of shoes, a hat, one toy. D, paper, pencil, small duffel bag. I intend to read this again if needed. What are three things Ken was allowed to take to Canada? A, ration card, favorite book, gloves. B, gas card, sorry, gas mask, ID card, Bible. C, two pairs of shoes, a hat, one toy. D, paper, pencil, small duffel bag. Both teams are ready, right? Give me a nod. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Both so teams are going with B. And B is the correct answer. Question is a short answer question, so once teams have rotated, we'll uh, read you this one. Number eight. What surprising hobby of Coco's did her mom tell her wasn't safe outdoors? What surprising hobby of Coco's did her mom tell her wasn't safe outdoors? Ten seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's reveal. We have rock climbing and drawing. And points away to call it but rock climbing was the right answer. Okay, Question number nine, multiple choice. What question does most girl ask Grandma Knight that Emma says you should never ask? A, what will you do if you never get out of jail? B, how old are you? C, where are your parents? D, why are you in jail? What question does most girl ask Grandma Knight that Emma says you should never ask? A, what will you do if you never get out of jail? B, how old are you? C, where are your parents? D, why are you in jail? Call it well, you look down. Both teams look down. I think we should reveal. We have D from both teams, which is the correct answer. So come to both teams. Okay, guys. Final question of this round. What was Dad's golden rule for hiking and camping that Maddie applied to her situation? A, make sure you get proper rest to make good decisions. B, if you are ever lost, stay put. C, eat early in the morning so you have energy for the day. D, stay hydrated. What was Dad's golden rule for hiking and camping that Maddie applied to her situation? A, make sure you get proper rest to make good decisions. B, if you are ever lost, stay put. C, eat early in the morning so you have energy for the day. And D, stay hydrated. Both teams are ready, so we'll reveal right away. We have B for both teams. Point to both teams, correct answer. 
And round of applause for both teams. Thanks a lot. And we'll start our next match between the Blue Bananas and the Blue Bananas. I think we're ready to go here with the fifth match. Blue Bananas versus Read, Win, Repeat. So we've got a question to start with being read by one of our authors. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara D. I'm so honored that you're reading Violet Sir Blue for your value of the books. And I hope you'll read my next book, which will be out in September. It's called Haven Jacob Saves the Planet, and it's about a kid who's obsessed with climate change. And I think a lot of kids are going to connect to that book. So um, please look out for it. Um, what was the reason that Kelly gave for putting a lock on her door? Okay, 30 seconds. So the cat doesn't go on her bed to keep the cat off her bed. Points for both teams. Okay, rotate both teams. Okay, we look ready to go. So here's question two, also read by one of the authors. in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. I hope you enjoy the survival adventure story set all the way in the Nevada desert, which is where I'm from. And I hope this book didn't make you too thirsty. Good luck in your competition, and may the best team win. What reason does Cleverly give for not sleeping on the outside edge of the sleeping bag? 30 seconds. Snakes. Okay, we're going to 
Royal Point Blue Bananas. Thanks, Mr. Kirk. That's what we have. Those teams are up here. Okay, question three is a multiple choice question. What causes Ken to be late for his lifeboat and have to take a different one? A, Officer Cooper needed his help. B, he had to look after one of the younger boys. C, there was a girl who was bleeding and Ken and an escort helped. D, he has to go back and get his coat. What causes Ken to be late for his lifeboat and have to take a different one? A, Officer Cooper needed his help. B, he had to look after one of the younger boys. C, there was a girl who was bleeding and Ken and an escort helped. D, he has to go back and get his coat. 30 seconds starts now. Like both teams are ready, just give me a nod if you are. Okay, let's hold up the answers. Both teams have answered D. He has to go back and get his coat. That's the correct answer. Point to both teams. Okay, we'll have both teams rotate, and the next question is short answer, so you'll be uh, writing a little bit more. Question four When Grandma Knight talked to Kabir about school, she said that Kabir needed book learning and to learn what other important thing. When Grandma Knife talked to Kabir about school, she said that Kabir needed book learning and to learn what other important thing. 30 seconds. that he didn't, that he shouldn't have trusted. Particularly that faint uncle. Okay, so we're moving on to question four. Oh, that was question four, sorry. Moving on to question five. This is also a short answer, so no multiple choice here. Whose cabin does Uncle Ruff give Louisa? Whose cabin does Uncle Ruff give Louisa? Try to reveal. See what we got. Let's go. Her older sisters, her sister Sophie. speaking to Omar once Omar had his interview with the UN? This is a short answer question. I'm going to read it one more time. Who seemed to have a hard time speaking to Omar once Omar had his interview with the UN? 30 seconds starts now.
Ten seconds. Five seconds. And let's sneak a peek at the answers. Time's up. We have his friend Jerry, and we have Jerry. And both are correct, so we are going to help you. Next up, we have a multiple choice question. Number seven, what spot of color appears on the ground as Maddie leaves her house one day and shows that the first winter is coming to an end and spring is coming soon? A, an iris, B, a crocus, C, a daffodil, D, a tulip. What spot of color appears on the ground and is a sign winter is coming to an end, spring is coming soon? A, an iris, B, a crocus, C, a daffodil, D, a tulip. And your 30 seconds starts now. Okay, both teams are ready, so let's have a look and see what they've come up with here. We've got B for read, win, repeat, and C for blue bananas. And the answer is B, so the points are ordered to read, win, repeat. Next, we have a multiple choice again. Actually, the rest of the questions in this match are all multiple choice. Question eight, what happened to Coco while Ollie was trying to decide if she should leave the bus? A, she was upset because other people did not want to sit with her. B, a picture from her journal was passed around. C, she bumped her head. D, her hair got stuck to a seat. What happened to Coco while Ollie was trying to decide if she should leave the bus? A, she was upset because other people did not want to sit with her. B, a picture from her journal was passed around. C, she bumped her head. D, her hair got stuck to a seat. 30 seconds. Both teams are ready, that's great, let's see. And we have D, her hair got stuck to a seat. Both teams are correct. All right, so we have two more questions in this round. Question number nine, multiple choice again. What did Kelly tell Wren had happened to have her supervisor stop trusting her and for Kelly to want to move to Donwood? A, she injured a patient with the wrong medication. B, she missed too many shifts due to illness. C, she miscalculated and some pills went missing. D, she stopped staying up late after her shift to finish up. What did Kelly tell Wren had happened to have her supervisor stop trusting her and for Kelly to want to move to Donwood? A, she injured a patient with the wrong medication. B, she missed too many shifts due to illness. C, she miscalculated and some pills went missing. D, she stopped staying late after her shift to finish up. Looks like both teams are ready. Let's have a look. And both teams have answered C, which is the correct answer. Question for this match. And it's multiple choice again. Question 10. What club did Mr. Easton want Ollie to rejoin? A. Math. B. Softball. C. Chess. D. Library. What club did Mr. Easton want Ollie to rejoin? A. Math. B. Softball. C. Chess. D. Library. Both teams look ready? Yes? Okay, let's have a look. C, chess, that is correct. Both teams are going to And that match is over, so very close and very well played by both teams. Eight to seven, that might be the highest combined score I've seen in a long time. So great job. We're going to send these teams off. And we have speedster readers on that side and Wolverines on this side.
Before we begin this next round, I think I should probably introduce myself. Um, I'm Ria Shabra, I'm a grade 12 student here at MSS, and I had the opportunity to help with the battle of the books for our grade 8s and 9s here. So I'm helping out reading out the answers um, or the questions today. Um, so for the first question, it's going to be read by one of the authors. Hi everybody, my name is Michelle Ketterisman. And I'm a children's author, and I'm the author of uh, the book Music for Tigers that is in your battle of the books. I'm so proud to say that, and I'm so grateful. I'm super excited to have Music for Tigers included in the competition. And I'm going to read out some of the questions. Um, so here we go. Good luck. What does Louisa hear? first when she steps off the bus in the Tasmanian forest. And your 30 seconds start now. also read by an another author. Hi everybody, I'm Barbara D. I'm so honored that you're reading Violet Circle for your Battle of the Books. Here are the questions for your Battle of the Books. According to Cat FX, what tells the world who you really are? Okay, hey, in your 30 seconds start now. Okay, question three is a multiple choice one. Who did Beth Webster tell Ollie that the smiling man had no power over? A, anyone who had written a book, B, the scarecrows, C, the brave, or D, the dead? Who did Beth Webster tell Ollie that the smiling man had no power over? A, anyone who had written a book, B, the scarecrows, C, the brave, or D, the dead? The 30 seconds start. Uh, 
five more seconds. Okay, let's see those answers. You have the dead and C. Who gets the scores? It was C the dead. Short answer. How does Kabir escape his fake uncle? In 30 seconds, start. Five more seconds. Okay, and let's see those answers. No points for that one. It was he throws a coffee in his face and runs. Very close. We feel like he wouldn't have gotten away from the uncle had he not thrown the coffee in his face, but we needed to do that. Very wrong okay. And he does hide the pot, so you guys both have some really good practice. Okay, question five is also a short answer. Where is John specifically when the power briefly returns? And time. after university? A, become a social worker and help people with hard lives. B, become a doctor. C, be, be an actress. Or D, be a lawyer and tell refugee girls about their rights. So A, be a social worker and help people with hard lives. B, become a doctor. C, be an actress. Or B, D, be a lawyer and tell refugee girls about their rights. Father of Civilian or D. Single Man Mayhew. So who 
do the adults on the light bulb think of as mad, but can think is grand? A, Harry Pierre, B, Miss Cornish, C, Father of Civilian, or D, Single Man Mayhew? Let's see those answers. And the both are correct. Okay, question eight is also again multiple choice. Who is the first visitor that George and Maddie receive? A, a coyote. B, some men riding bikes, C, a bear, or D, a convoy of trucks? A, a coyote, B, some men riding bikes, C, a bear, or D, a convoy of trucks? Point to both teams. Okay, final question for this round. This is multiple choice. After watching everyone pre prepare just before opening night, who does Ren decide will not be the one to mess up? A. Avery. B. Kai. C. Poppy. Or D. Emmett. After watching everyone prepare just before opening night, who does Ren decide will not be the one to mess up? A. Avery, B. Kai, C. Poppy, or D. Emmett? Boba and Lazy Bo.
Yes. Is that please I'll just stop. Just stop Okay. All right, both teams look ready, and we, even though we have no subs, like no players sitting off, we still need to rotate through this job at the beginning here, okay? Um, so we're going to start with a question from one of our authors for match seven. Here we go. Hi, I'm JL Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles, and I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. What 16-mile detour did Stuart believe should be part of the plan to get to Brighton Ranch? 30 seconds. So let's have a look at what these teams have right now. <laughs> All right. People say it's haunted and tired. Okay. This one, it's small. People say it's haunted. People say it's haunted and very old things that were, that's where they okay. I'm going to give our judges a tough call on this one. Okay, we're going to go point to both teams on that. Yeah, there was one, there was kind of two things you could have written there, and they both got the, sort of the same one. So, um, yeah, point to both teams. There you go. Sometimes the people that write these questions tend to write a little bit too much in the answer, and they got like more than half of what was written for that one, so we were awarding points for that. That's why we had to wait and just uh, think about that. They made a great decision. Okay, so we're going to go to question three, which is multiple choice. At Wren's new school, who grabbed her drawing of Nebula off her desk? A, her teacher, B, Avery, C, Kai, D, Poppy. At Wren's new school, who grabbed her drawing of Nebula off her desk? A, her teacher, B, Avery, C, Kai, D, Poppy. 30 seconds starts now. I think both teams are ready. Let's have a look. So 
both teams have D poppy. Judges are awarding point to both teams. Good job. And we'll look at Rotate, please. Yeah. Boba. Team Boba. Rotate. All right. Thanks. We're looking right here. Okay. Uh, question number four. At one of his interviews, or sorry, at one of his UN interviews, what question? Could Omar and Fatuma only answer by repeating, I don't know? At one of his UN interviews, what question could Omar and Fatuma only answer by repeating, I don't know? 30 seconds. Seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look. Where his mom is, where are your parents? Point to call about. Specifically, it's the mom, not the mom. Rotate, please. Question five is short answer. What did Kabir find in the classroom that showed him how colorful and beautiful the world could be? What did Kabir find in the classroom that showed him how colorful and beautiful the world could be? 30 seconds. multiple choice. What does Ken's friend Terry sneak into his suitcase for the trip? A. A football. B. Extra books. C. More clothing. D. A sketch pad. What does Ken's friend Terry sneak into his suitcase for the trip? A. A football. B. Extra books. C. More clothing. D. A sketch pad. choice. What room does Maddie take cover in when the tornado appears? A. Master bedroom. B. Bathroom. C. Basement. D. Kitchen. What room does Maddie take cover in when the tornado appears? A. Master bedroom. B. Bathroom. C. Basement. D. Kitchen. Both teams look ready. Give me a quick nod if you are. Yep. Oh, he said, yep. Okay, if they're ready, let's go. 
All right, we have B bathroom for both teams. That is correct. All right, next question is a short answer question. Question number eight. What was the name of the crazy lady that Ollie stole a book from? What was the name of the crazy lady that Ollie stole a book from? 30 seconds. that she will be at the Chicago Comic Con? A. Evil Tooth Fairy B. Baby Yoda C. Deadpool D. Mermaid and I'll give the choices one more time A. Evil Tooth Fairy B. Baby Yoda C. Deadpool D. Mermaid Both teams look ready. Let's have a look. And we have D Mermaid and B Baby Yoda. Points awarded to call it both for that one. Baby Yoda is the correct one. And that might be the highest score now we've had. It's actually 10 to 7. That's a perfect round for this team, Lady Hebo. Um, so congratulations to both teams. Really well played round. And next up we have Sassy Valley Turtles and Blue Bananas. from one of our authors. Hello to the speakers. 
students of School District 58. I'm Megan E. Freeman, and I'm the author of the book, Alone. Best of luck to all the teams who are competing, and thanks so much for reading. What was the weekend plan that got Maddie into her mess? All right, 30 seconds starts now. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Both teams look ready. Let's have a look. To go to her grandparents' summer house for a sleepover with their friends, have a sleepover at grandparents'. Point to both teams. Great job. Okay. That's our first video from that author. We let them decide how many to read, so some do more than others. That's why you're seeing some authors a lot more than, than others. And then some they're really busy and they don't have time. They've got to write. Otherwise we have nothing good to read. Okay, here is question two written or sorry, read by an author. Everybody. My name is Michelle Ketterisman, so here we go. Good luck. What does Louisa want to be when she grows up? 30 seconds starts now. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look. And we have violinist and play the violin. Points to both teams for that. Good job. Question three. Let me get our schedule back up here. All right. Question three is a short answer question. When Cleverly realizes how sick Stu really is, she asks John what he needs. What is John's reply? 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look. We have insulin and sleep. And we're awarding a point of vermilion forks for the answer of insulin. That's good. Moving on to question four. Oh, I'll just give you guys a second. Excellent. Okay, question four. <clears throat> what are the names of the two men who are described as ambassadors, messengers, and negotiators on board the lifeboat? A. Peard and Baksu. B. Collins and Peard. C. Buxu and Collins, 
D. O'Sullivan and Baksu. I'm going to read the whole thing again one more time. What are the names of the two men who are described as ambassadors, messengers, and negotiators on board the lifeboat? A. Peard and Baksu. B. Collins and Peard. C. Baksu and Collins. D. O'Sullivan and Baksu. 30 seconds. Both teams look ready. Let's have a look. Let's see what they've come up with. Both teams came up with C, and that is incorrect. Uh, the answer was A, Peard and Baksu. There were a lot of people working on those ships. Rotate, please. That one is probably going to be pretty challenging. And we are moving on to question five. Who did Kelly say had cleaned up the house and Ren thought that person must have vacuumed under her bed? A, Crystal. B, Emily. C, Poppy. D, Annika. Who did Kelly say had cleaned up the house and Ren thought that person must have vacuumed under her bed? A, Crystal. B, Emily. C, Poppy. D, Annika. Teams look ready. Let's have a look and see what they've come up with for this one. Both teams have B. That is correct. Point for both teams. Great job. We're moving on with a short answer question for question six. What was the weird thing that Coco wanted her teacher to tell the class about the fire at Garrett Webster's school? What was the weird thing that Coco wanted her teacher to tell the class about the fire at Garrett Webster's school? 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. And let's have a look. No bodies were found and about the kids that died in the school. Okay. We're awarding a point to blue bananas. Both are, are right, but that wasn't the weird thing. Um, the weird thing was that the bodies were found. Okay, we're going to move on with question seven, which is a multiple choice question. How do kids from the primary schools in each block get to the middle school? A, pass their exam. B, write an application letter to the school, C, get approved by the UN people that run the schools, D, save up to afford the application fee. How do kids from the primary schools in each block get to the middle school? A, pass their exam, B, write an application letter to the school, C, get approved by the UN people that run the schools, D, save up to afford the application fee. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Oh. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look and see what these teams have come up with. We have A and D as possible answers. And we're awarding a point to blue bananas. The answer is A, pass the exam. And last question is to rotate. 
and move on to question eight, which is the last short answer question of this match. There's two more multiple choice to follow. Question eight. What does Kabir do with the gift that his teacher gives him on his last day at school? What does Kabir do with the gift that his teacher gives him on his last day at school? Choice question. Question nine. How does Shadow get back and forth from Convict Rock? A. He hops on rocks that lead across the water. B. There's a small log bridge that he can use to get across. C. He can swim across. D. Eleanor takes him in a boat once each day. How does Shadow get back and forth from Convict Rock? A. He hops on rocks that lead across the water. B. There's a small log bridge that he can get across. C. He can he can swim across. D. Eleanor takes him in a boat once each day. 30 seconds. Let's have a look and see what they've come up with. And answers are revealed. Both teams have answered D. No points awarded. He swims across, so it's C. Okay, rotate. And this is our last question for this match. Where did angry voice say that their group needed to be by dark. A, over the border. B, back to Main Street. C, to the department store. D, Denver. Where did Angry Voice say that their group needed to be by dark? A, over the border. B, back to the Main Street. C, to the department store. D, Denver. 30 seconds. reveal. And we've got two different answers here. We've got D and we've got C. And those are both incorrect. So Angry Voice is one of those looters. He's kind of a head guy in the looters in alone. I'm not sure if people knew that. There wasn't tons of information in that question. And he wanted them to get back over the, across the border. So that's the end of that match. Well played by both teams.
wind speeds, so two wind speeds one way. Okay, um, so the first question is going to be by one of the authors. I'm so honored that you're reading Violet Zerbo for your Battle of the Books. Here are the questions for your Battle of the Books. Okay. What did Rennie call the makeup that she did to Annika that caused her to have to leave Annika's party? Hey, and your 30 seconds start now. Let's see those answers. Hi everybody, my name is Michelle Ketterisman, so here we go, good luck. Why did the men leave the camp in 1939? Very important. A. Beth Webster and Phil. B. Kathy 
Kathy Webster and Mike, C. Beth Webster and Mike, or D. Kathy Webster and Phil. Who were the first two people to give Ollie, Brian, and Coco the clue that the maze was going to be very important? A. Beth Webster and Phil, B. Kathy Webster and Mike, C. Beth Webster and Mike, or D. Kathy Webster and Phil. Find is multiple choice. What was the name of the ship that rescued Ken and his friends? A. HMS Anthony, B. HMS Lord Prevost, C. HMS Fleming, or D. HMS Glasgow? What was the name of the ship that rescued Ken and his friends? A. HMS Anthony, B. HMS Lord Prevost, C. HMS Fleming, or D. HMS Glasgow? In 30 seconds. was when God gives you a gift. Finish the end of this expression that Fatima and Omar used was when God gives you a gift. That's time. Let's see the answers. We have to use it and be thankful. Okay, point goes to speech to read, sir. Other houses. A. 
food for starving pets that have no owners. B, some money to pay for supplies she takes. Uh, C, a note telling people where to find her if they need help. Or D, a thank you note with her name and address. What does Maddie leave behind while scavenging other houses? A, food for starving pets that have no owners. B, some money to pay for supplies she takes. C, a note telling people where to find her if they need help. Or D, a thank you note with her name and address. Again, multiple choice. What did Ronnie think that was proved wrong by the first man she met in the city? A. It's better to sleep out in the open. B. Houses don't have to have roofs. C. Nothing in her future could be any good. Or D. Bars are just for locking people up. What did Ronnie think that was proved wrong by the first man she met in the city? A. It's better to sleep out in the open. B. Houses don't have to have roofs. C, nothing in the future could be any good, or D, bars are just for walking up people. Gives him signals with the position of her head. Okay, and this is the final question for this round. It's multiple choice. What did everyone discover and report in a chorus shortly after the bus quit running? A. There's something odd about this farm. B. My phone does not work. C. The bus driver is a strange guy. Or D. It sort got dark quickly. What did everyone discover and report in a chorus shortly right after the bus quit running? A. There's something odd about this farm. B. My phone does not work. C. The bus driver is a strange guy. Or D. It sort got dark quickly.
Okay, let's see the answers. Okay, so we're going to take a short break here. We have to figure out, uh, there were three groups of three teams. I'm going to show you on my computer here at the top. And to qualify for playoffs, you kind of have to win your group, like have the best record of the three teams in your group, or be the second place team that has the most questions correct. Um, so I have to look at that and uh, determine who the fourth playoff team is. Okay? Um, Ms. Larson, are we... Ms. Cleveland, do you want to do the group photo now? I would love to do that. Do you want to do it outside? Is it looking okay out there? Has anyone been outside today? Is it okay to do a group photo out there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a couple things before you leave. We're going to just announce um, the three teams that uh, are advancing the playoffs. There'll be four, but I'm going to announce the first three. So um, in the Wicked group, I came up with these names. I don't know why. Um, could have been group A. It's Lazy Bow from Colville, so they're advancing the playoffs with their two wins. Round of applause for them. And in the group we call the Battleborn group. I just got to check this out. Uh, Wolverines from Colville have two wins. So they're, they're the and our final group is the Challenge group. And in that particular one, uh, Blue Bananas won their two matches. So they're the one. Okay. Now, some of the teams that won one match and lost one match, one of those teams is going to advance. And I have to just check that over. Okay, so we're going to have one more team advancing. And next up, we were going to announce the top three. Uh, I'm going to do that when you guys come back from the picture. The top three books in our voting. So which books were the top three? You can think about that while you follow Ms. Larson's instructions. And by the way, a big thank you, Ms. Larson, for making the space look pretty and giving us a really great place to host our battle. So great. <laughs> Thank you. 
then we're done. I don't know if we can give somebody that advantage, right? I think we have to go with four. If both teams don't get it right, then we'll ask another question. We'll just keep going until we have a, a winner. So if uh, we go to a second or a third tie-breaking question, then we're going to rotate, OK? Now, with these questions, you can be, uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to our judges about this, but you can be closer to the right answer than the other team. And we're going to say that that team is the winner if, if both teams answer and one team's closer to the right answer than the other, if that makes sense. Do you have the sheet? No, I thought we did. It'll be at the very, very back after the final match. Okay, so are you guys good? One question and get the answer as close as you can. Caleb, one answer and he's writing, that's why I'm using his name. Get the answer as close as you can. I'm just going to make sure our judges are ready. Okay. While the judges are getting ready, I'll tell you the three finalists for Book of the Year, the top three um, books in terms of votes after all the students voted and we counted all their votes. So in alphabetical order, okay, we have uh, Alone, Born Behind Bars, and 96 miles. Those are the top three according to student and teachers voting. And then we'll tell you which one is the number one vote getting book in a moment. Or actually, not in a moment, after the final match. Okay, so I get to read this question. When the group was up in the barn and needed to leave in the morning, what did Brian and Ollie agree was the way that each of the three in their group had surprised each other? Your goal here is to get one correct answer for each of the three in the group, so three correct answers. If one team gets more correct answers, then we're going to say that that group's the winner of this round. So I'll read the question one more time. When the group was up in the barn and needed to leave in the morning, what did Brian and Ollie agree was the way that each of the three in their group had surprised each other? I'm going to give you guys 45 seconds because there's no writing in this question. Ten seconds. Five seconds. All right, let's have a look and see what these guys have. This is kind of a challenging question. Okay, so we have Brian is actually nice and the talking scarecrow. No points awarded, I think. No. Okay. I would go to the audience, but we're really low on time, so I'm going to tell you. One of the things they found out that was a big surprise was that Coco was super clumsy on the ground, but really great at climbing. Ollie was really grumpy most of the time, but when things got bad, she was the bravest. And even hockey stars read books like Brian. So that's, you know, classic case of once you get to know somebody, big surprises. Okay, so another question coming. Okay. This is another one where you write as many correct answers as you can. Once Ren finds out from Crystal what has been happening with her mom's addiction, what are some of the signs that avalanched into Ren's head? And give you 45 seconds again. Do 
20 seconds. So we have a unanimous decision by the judges to accept the Diamond Bell answer is the correct one. Team Bobo gets credit for that. <laughs> the same game. I have nine right answers for that question. Her mom's disappearances, the locked doors, the unlabeled pill bottles, the way she freaked out at Ren snooping in her bathroom, stomach bugs, the phone calls at work that she blamed on Ren, the missing money, the empty look in her eyes, and how she seemed drunk after the night with the doctor friend. Okay, so um, we've been repeating. You guys have a fifth place finish. Thanks very much. Good job. We're going to give you one of the signs as you head back to the seat. And Team Boba can stay here because they are in semi final matchup number one. And their opponent for that one is Lazy Boat. This is a rematch of an earlier match. So Lazy Bo from Collierville was the first place finisher in the round robin with 19 questions answered correctly. So these teams will have a rematch now. semi-finalists will compete in the second matchup, and that is Blue Bananas and Wolverines. So just remember to rotate after each question. We don't have anybody subbing on or off. That's great. And we have our first question being read by an author here in a moment. Try to reset my timer. So honored that you're reading Violet's Your Blue for your Battle of the Books. Here are the questions for your Battle of the Books. What candy is a nickname for Renata that only her dad uses? Thirty seconds. Five seconds. And time's up. Let's have a look here. So we have Jelly Bean and Jelly Bean. Points to both teams. Congratulations. Good job. Okay, please. All right, question two, also read by a author. And so we will go to that now. Hi, I'm J.L. Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles. And I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. During the first day of their walk, who does Stuart tell cleverly is really responsible for the power outage? 30 seconds.
Ten seconds. Both teams look ready. Let's have a peek. Yes. We've got zombies. Not really, but that's that's the correct answer. Good job for both teams. Round of All right, we're moving on to question three. Question three will also be asked by an author. And here we go. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Kedrisman. So here we go. Good luck. How did the Pyman River get its name? All right, 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. And time's up. Let's have a look. So we have because of the jail and after the escaped criminal who used to be a baker. And we're awarding a point to Leahy both. Okay, we have a multiple choice question coming. We may have a few announcements here and there as lunch starts at MSF soon. So if there's an announcement, I'm just going to stop reading until the announcement's over. Okay. Question four. What everyday item is required to play Omar's favorite game, Capta Billatoy? A, a lot of plastic bags. B, a broom. C, a sandal. D, firewood. Drew has set up an information booth. Wait a second. Check it out, get some information. Ten seconds. And time's up. Let's have a look. So we have C, which was a sandal, and A, a plastic bag. Call it a little against the point. Lady Bo, sandal is the correct answer. All right, moving on to question five. Multiple choice as well. Who are the two kids that already knew the lifeboat drills when Ken and his new friends were just being taught them? A, Derek and Margaret. B, Patricia and Michael. C, Pamela and Alan. D, Terrence and Jane. Who were the two kids that already knew the lifeboat drills when Ken and his new friends were just being taught them? A, Derek and Margaret. B, Patricia and Michael. C, Pamela and Alan. D, Terrence and Jane. Audience, we're going to give you a reminder just to be a little bit quiet when you're chatting with your friends so that these guys don't hear you what you're saying. Both teams look ready? Yes? Okay, let's have a look. And we have two answers, B and D. And Lehu is correct, it's B, Patricia and Michael. And we're going to rotate. And we have another multiple choice question coming. Question six, where was the field trip that Ollie's class was going to? A, Evansburg Ranch. B. Left Creek Ranch, 
C, Smoke Hollow Farm. D, Misty Valley Farm. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. And time's up. Let's have a look and see what each team has written. We've got D and Smoke Hollow Farm. Smoke Hollow Farm with C. Labo is getting credit for that one. Answer is D. All of those four teams are here in the book, so. Question seven. This one is also multiple choice. Where does Maddie wish that she could be to be, quote, happily bored and surrounded by people I didn't even realize I loved, end quote? A, visiting her grandparents in Texas. B, with her mom and Paul. C, math class. D, listening to Elliot and James. Where does Maddie wish that she could be to be, quote, happily bored and surrounded by people I didn't even realize I loved? A, visiting her grandparents in Texas. B, with her mom and Paul. C, math class. D, listening to Elliot and James. Teams look ready, so we're going to do a reveal here. And big thumbs up for both groups here. They got it. C, math class. <laughs> and we're going to rotate and move to question eight, which is a short answer question. Question eight. In what way does Ronnie want Kabir to be more like the moon? In what way does Ronnie want Kabir to be more like the moon? Ten seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's have a look. And the team Boba is answered with brave, and Lady Bo answered with resilient. Those are good answers. So judges have decided where to point to Leahy Bo. I mean, if I need lessons on pronouncing it, so I'm just going to be late. I think the exact phrase in the book was that he wanted him never to give up, which is showing resiliency. So we deliberated on that. Great job. Question nine. What was the quote on the crossed stitch pillow that Eleanor had made? What was the quote on the cross-stitched pillow that Eleanor had made? 30 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, time's up. Let's sneak a peek at what we have. I might be rushing a little bit. Art is born of the observation and investigation of nature. True art is observation. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, point awarded to Team Boba. So we're 
we go on to the final question, and we have a multiple choice question to end this match. Here's what we have. Hours after Adri teased Ren about her nerdiversary with Kai, what did Poppy call Ren to say? A, she wanted Ren to tell someone about Avery's bullying. B, she wanted Ren to listen to Avery's apology. C, she wanted Ren to reconsider accepting Kai's valentine. D, she wanted Ren to apologize. Hours after Avery teased Ren about her nerdiversary with Kai, what did Poppy call Ren to say? A, she wanted Ren to tell someone about Avery's bullying. B, she wanted Ren to listen to Avery's apology. C, she wanted Ren to reconsider accepting Kai's valentine. D, she wanted Ren to apologize. 30 seconds. Looks like both teams are ready. And I get to practice saying the word nerdiversary ever again. And we have, let's reveal our answers. We've got D from Team Boba and D from Lazy Bo. And points to both teams. Excellent job. And so Lady Team Bo advanced to the finals, and we have um, Team Boba finishing in fourth place. Great job by both teams. And next we have the, I can't really get that right now, but thanks. No, I can't do it. Wyatt Benton to the office, please. That's Wyatt Benton. There is someone to see you at the office. Thank you. Okay, so we have our last two uh, finalists coming up, I hope. And that was, I set that paper down. I bet they know which teams they are, though. Okay, uh, Wolverines. Over here. And blue bananas. Semi-final. The winner of this final advances. The winner of this semi-final advances to our final match. And we start with a question read from one of our authors. And here that one comes. Hi, I'm JL Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles, and I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. Why was John unable to share his water with Cleverly and Will when they sat in the shelter they made for their first break? All right, 30 seconds. seconds. Five seconds. And time's up. Yeah, it was boiled. Or sorry, it wasn't boiled. It was toilet water. And they only had enough for three days. Point in order to blue bananas. It's true they didn't have any water. They didn't have any water. They didn't have any water. They didn't have any One point of order there. And our second question comes from one of our authors. And we're just going to rotate here. All right. Looks like we're ready for question two. Hello to the students of School Day. 
District 58. I'm Megan E. Freeman, and I'm the author of the book, Alone. Best of luck to all the teams who are competing, and thanks so much for reading. What is hope compared to in a poem Maddie reads by the poet Emily Dickinson? All right, 30 seconds. Five. Okay, let's have a look. We have a bird and compared it to a bird. We have a bird. Both teams have answered a bird. Points to both teams. Great job. That's really good. Now we'll have a third question read by an author for this matchup. Why are thalassines thought to be extinct? I'm going to get her to read it again. She's nice that way, she'll do it. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Katerisman. So here we go. Good luck. Why are thalassines thought to be extinct? All right, 30 seconds. Five seconds. All right, time's up. Let's have a look. Time's up. Let's go. They hunted them. They haven't been seen. They hunted them. They hunted them. Judges are not awarding a point for that question. We are going to rotate and move to the next question. The judges just wanted a little bit more information on that one. It had to do with the bounty that was placed. Question four is multiple choice. What was the nickname for the place where the scarecrows had captured the students? A. Wonderland. B, Tasmania, C, Persephone, D, Bad Narnia. What was the nickname for the place where the scarecrows had captured the students? A, Wonderland, B, Tasmania, C, Persephone, D, Bad Narnia. 30 seconds. Let's have a look at what they've come up with for this question. Looks like both have answered C. No points awarded for this question. The answer was, say it really loud if you got it. D, D, bad Narnia. It's always easier in the audience. Okay, great try. Rotate. Lots of us probably didn't know that one. Okay, here we go with question number five, which is also a multiple choice question. When Kabir gives candy to Mouse Girl and she grabs almost everything, what does Kabir get that he knows will last longer than the candy? A, 
A smile from Emma. B, the respect from Grandma Knife. C, Mouse Girl as a friend. D, a favor from Mrs. Snake. When Kabir gives candy to Mouse Girl and she grabs almost everything, what does Kabir get that he knows will last longer than the candy? A, a smile from Emma. B, the respect from Grandma Knife. C, Mouse Girl as a friend. D, a favor from Mrs. Snake. 30 seconds. Both teams are looking ready. Yep. Two bananas, you good? Okay, let's go. Let's see it. We have A from blue bananas and C from wolverines. Judges are awarding a point to blue bananas. Thank you, Zay. All right, following that rotation, we're on to question six. Question six is a short answer question. What lifeboat was Ken assigned to? What lifeboat was Ken assigned to? 30 seconds. Both teams are ready. Let's see what they came up with. They were very fast getting this one. Almost like everybody knew this would be a question. Yeah, they're both right. Eight. So great job, both teams coming up with that one so quickly. We're on to number seven, which is a multiple choice question. What did Poppy judge to be weird about Ren? but that Ren decided meant good weird. A, Ren mentioned that her mom and her dad did not, sorry, I heard that wrong. Ren mentioned that her mom and her did not fight. B, Ren's makeup skills. C, Ren had lots of snacks at her house because of her mom's job. D, Ren did not really want to be a soccer kid or a drama kid. Let me read that again. What did Poppy judge to be weird about Ren but that Ren decided meant good weird. A, Ren mentioned that her mom and her did not fight. B, Ren's makeup skills. C, Ren had lots of snacks at her house because of her mom's job. And D, Ren did not really want to be a soccer kid or a drama kid. 30 seconds. Okay, looks like both sides are ready. Let's have a look. We have A and C as the two answers. And we're awarding the point to Blue Bananas. Answer is A. All of those things are somewhat true, but only one of them was considered the good, weird thing. Moving on to question eight. On the first distribution day, what does Omar miss the most? A, his father. B, his mom. C, study time. He has to stand in lines. And D, his friends. On the first distribution day, what does Omar miss the most? A, his father. B, his mom. C, study time. He has to stand in lines. D, his friends. 30 seconds. Okay, looks like both teams are ready. Let's reveal their answers. We have B from the Blue Bananas, pickers, and A from the Wolverines. And the judges are awarding a point to Blue Bananas. Answer B. And we will rotate. Question nine is the final short answer question, and then we'll have a multiple choice question to end this match. Question nine is, Kabir's father said that, quote, fear is a lock, end quote. What is the key, and where do you find it? I'm going to read that one more time. Kabir's father said that, quote, fear is a lock, end quote. What is the key, and where do we find it? 30 seconds.
Ten seconds. Five seconds. And time. Let's have a look and see what we've come up with here. A two-part question. This is a semi-final, so things are meant to be a little more challenging. And they both answered your heart, which is part of it. It's three foot nine series there. Yeah, that's how I remember it too. Okay, um, so here is a lock. Courage is the key, and you find it in your hands, because it's in your hands to, to show the courage to overcome the fear. Okay, let's rotate. I wondered if that was the hardest question of the whole thing. So, good job, you guys. I liked your answer, even if it wasn't quite what we had. Here's the last question of this match. Who told cleverly that the point of being self-reliant is that you can help yourself and others? A, her grandma. B, John's father. C, Stu. D, her father who told cleverly that the point of being self-reliant is that you can help yourself and others. A, her grandma, B, John's father, C, Stu, or D, her father. 30 seconds. Okay, both teams are ready. Let's see what they've come up with here. And both teams have a her grandma. That was the correct answer. So great job. Points for both teams. <laughs> that is the final question of that match. So the Blue Bananas were the winners of that match. And big congratulations for Carlo Wolverine for coming in the third place. Great job. Blue Bananas are who you should say. <laughs> Stay because you're in the finals. Yeah, I'm good at that too. Good, good decision. Okay, so then we'll bring up our uh, other finalist from Caldwell, Nancy Bo. I'm still waiting for my lessons. How to correctly pronounce that? And look at Mrs. Larson's never stops working, making our space look great and helping us run a really successful event. Thank you again. Okay, so we're on to our final match. We should change all the rules. No, not do that. Okay, uh, we've got one rotating on, and don't forget to rotate. We've got uh, three questions from authors to start this one. Okay, here we go. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Ketterusman. So here we go. Good luck. What do Louisa and Colin have in common? Okay, 30 seconds. change the rules for this one, actually. I'm going to read you all four choices. You can pick from these four choices. Okay. This question, she read it slightly differently from how I asked it. Okay, so here's your four choices. A, they both like to cook. B, they both play violin. C, they both like solo activities and are nervous around people. D, they both like to play baseball. So the choice is A, they both like to cook, B, they both play violin, C, they both like solo activities and are nervous around people, D, they both like to play baseball. Okay, both teams look ready, let's have a look. C, correct, great job, point for each. Okay, here comes our next question, also read from one of our authors. Hi, I'm 
I'm J.L. Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles, and I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. What plan did Will dream about and share with the group just before Stu nearly collapsed? All right, 30 seconds. I'm going to play the question again. Hi, I'm J.L. Esplin. I'm the author of this book, 96 Miles, and I'm so excited to hear that it's one of the books you're reading for the Battle of the Books competition in your school district in British Columbia, Canada. What plan did Will dream about and share with the group just before Stu nearly collapsed? We get 15 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. All right, let's have a look and see what each team has. So blue bananas, not quite have a blank on this one. I'm going to get closer. Riding courses to the ranch? Okay. I don't think so, but you're very close. Judges say no as well. Riding horses was right. Where are they riding horses to? Las Vegas, yeah. Okay, so no points awarded for that one. Let's rotate. When he heard that it was a ranch, he got super excited. He was like, when we get there, we'll be able to ride to my parents' house. Okay, so we have one more author question in this match. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara D. I'm so honored that you're reading Violets Are Blue for your Battle of the Books. Here are the questions for your Battle of the Books. Okay. What body parts come together to make a family tradition and a joke between Ren and either of her parents? All right, 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Both teams look ready. Let's have a look. And we have a hand sandwich and hand sandwich. Both teams are correct. Point to both teams. Question four, short answer question. What did reading mean to Ollie? What did reading mean to Ollie? 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Both teams look ready. Let's have a look and see what they have come up with here. A way to escape from reality and an escape from her life. Points to both. I think a place where she could not be Olivia Adler, which is almost exactly what they wrote. So great job. And we're moving on to question five. This is multiple choice. At first meeting, how did Kabir think the uncle that took him in after he left prison was like Grandma Knife? 
A, quiet and wise, but with energy ready to burst out. B, edgy and sharp, but with kindness ready to ooze out. C, clever and bold, but with manners ready for his employer. D, clean and efficient, but with a smile that made him seem trustworthy. I'm going to read the entire thing. At first meeting, how did Kabir think the uncle that took him in after he left prison was like Grandma Knight? A, quiet and wise, but with energy ready to burst out. B, edgy and sharp, but with kindness ready to ooze out. C, clever and bold, but with manners ready for his employer. D, clean and efficient, but with a smile that made him seem trustworthy. Both teams are ready, because I read slow, and they think fast, and they both answer B, and that is the correct answer, so we come to both teams. Wow, well, I love those four answers, they didn't really turn out to be true, did they? Okay. We are moving on to question six. This is a short answer question. What does Ken think is contagious after the doctor tells him that, quote, everything will be all right and soon we'll be in Canada, end quote? What does Ken think is contagious after the doctor tells him that everything will be all right and soon we'll be in Canada, end quote? 30 seconds. They're both ready. You good? Okay, let's see. We have hope and optimism. Point is our to blue bananas. <laughs> Certainly a feeling of optimism, so good effort from both teams. Question seven. What word does Miriam use to describe Omar's decision to quit school? This is a short answer. That's the whole thing. I'm going to say it one more time. What word does Miriam use to describe Omar's decision to quit school? 30 seconds. choice. We have three questions left. All three are multiple choice. And here is question eight. One of Cat FX's first pieces of advice is on how to build your character. What does she recommend? A. Take big risks to get big rewards. B. Really go for it. There's no way to overdo it. C. Build it from the inside out. D. Concealing will allow you to determine what you want to share. One of CatFX's first pieces of advice is on how to build your character. What does she recommend? A, take big risks to get big rewards. B, really go for it. There's no way to overdo it. C, build it from the inside out. D, concealing will allow you to determine what you want to share. Both teams are ready. As I'm reading that the second time, I'm like, they probably already have the right answer written down. And they do. It's C. Build it from the inside out. Great job. Next we have question nine, multiple choice. About two months after his interview with the UN, Omar felt like his entire life was about what? A, studying. B, hunger. C, waiting. D, working. About two months after his interview with the UN, Omar felt like his entire life was about what? 
A, studying, B, hunger, C, waiting, D, working. 30 seconds. see what they've come up with here. And both teams have answered C. Again, that's the correct answer. All right, our final question, multiple choice. Well, might be our final question. It's the final question that's scheduled. Question 10. What idea planted itself in Maddie's mind but needed the library's knowledge to save the day. A, creating a drain near the basement in case of future floods. B, praying for a rescue. C, fixing one of the neighbor's vehicles. D, making a garden. What idea planted itself in Maddie's mind but needed the library's knowledge to save the day? A, creating a drain near the basement in case of future floods. B, praying for a rescue. C, fixing one of the neighbor's vehicles. D, making a garden. 30 seconds. Both teams look ready. Give me a nod if you're ready, teams. Okay, let's have a look. And both teams are correct. The answer is D. Uh, so that is the end of that match. And we have Blue Bananas with 9 and Lady Bo with 8. So, Bobby Blue Bananas is the winner today of our 2022 Battle of the Book. Okay, so we're going to have a very quick um, awards ceremony here. And, uh, I think we'll start with Blue Bananas. So for Blue Bananas, this is what we have. Your school gets to take possession of that trophy. Um, Vermilion Forts won it last year, and they didn't get to take it back to their school. This year, I insist, or I'll have to drive it down there and be really cranky about it. You take it back to your school and put it up so your school can see that you guys won it this year. And you get to add a plaque, which we can help you order so that it looks the same as the other plaques, where you put the name of your team and uh, the year that you, you won. And you'll see the one from Vermilion Forks' team last year up at the top there. You also uh, are going to receive a miniature version of that same uh, painting, which is um, done for us by Jean Kinkuel, who's a retired teacher. And uh, you get those to keep. And the trophy comes back next year when we have another battle of books. Also, everybody gets one book prize. So you'll see on the table over there where Mrs. Cleveland will wave at you so you know who she is. She has... Uh, and Mrs. Larson and her TAs and Ms. Gowan, they have a lot of uh, books there that are wrapped as gifts for you for participating. So every person gets one uh, book gift. And I'm going to just give you a short piece of advice. If you open the book and you're like, oh, I've already read this, or oh, hmm, not, not so about this one, it's okay to trade with somebody else. And you know, if you're friends with a few of the people here, you can borrow books off each other anyway. So congratulations to Blue Bananas and come up and collect the other part of your thoughts. In second place, and this team hardly ever got a question wrong. It's, it's probably the most impressive second place performance I've ever seen. And so, they're going to teach me how to say their name in French properly. Lazy Hen. I don't think I did a great job, but you guys did an amazing job. Fantastic work. And so you can go and collect uh, a prize as well. Go ahead, up to the table Team 
also from Collinsville, was Wolverines. Congratulations to them. Great job. First place in their group, two consecutive wins. Really close semifinal match. They did a great job. Next in fourth place, the winner of the only tiebreaker we've ever had to have. My worst nightmare came true. Um, I tried to write super hard questions that both teams can't possibly get right. Um, and that's Team Boba. Boba. In fifth place, almost made it to the semifinals, lost that tiebreaker. Read, win, repeat, RWR. And the next team I'd like to call are the Speedster Readers from Vermillion Forks. Great job. Sixth place. And the next team I'd like to call, these ones are in no particular order, the Bench Bears. All right, next team I'd like to call are the Sassy Baddie Turtles. Fabulous job by that team as well. And oh, it's a little crowded up there. I'm going to wait before I call you. Just because, like, look at it. It's so packed up there. But you know I'm calling you. Next. I know, right? This team looks like a real solid group of friends. Nope. All right, our last team, let's give them a round of applause to Sham. <laughs> 